All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Or good morning. I'm used to saying good evening because for a while there, I typically started my streams around like 10 or 11 p.m. or so. It's like 4.40 in the morning for me. So, uh, what even is time anymore? Not going to worry about it. Hope you're having a good whatever time of day it is for you right now. Bloopa. Bloopa. Thank you so much for the 11 months. Welcome back. Very much appreciate the support. Lo-fi speed runs to relax to. That's where we're at. What's up, Lava Strawberry? A British good morning. Is that a sex thing? Or a food thing? Sounds like it could be either. What's up, Ducky? Good morning, man. Hope you're doing all right. Hey, Yokos. Welcome, welcome. Enjoying some of the new follower emotes. Um... The plan is to just kind of have them there as placeholders and then eventually getting some better emotes. Because I have a bunch of emote slots that I need to, to actually fill. And I just haven't had the money to, to commission new emotes. But really quickly, I slapped together some, some photoshopped Silent Hill character faces <laughs> for... Uh, for some emotes for a bit. And then eventually we'll get them replaced with some actual artwork. Hopefully by Trina. But we'll see. Hey, Jurgles. Hey, Recky Ben. Hope Keto. Good morning. Hey, Viola. Hey, Sale. Hey, Techie. Up at these D-Gen hours. Actually, I don't know what time it is for you. But it is Harry Mason time. I'm trying to, uh, trying to improve at my, my Silent Hill speedrun game. Once again. Because I started running all the games again like 10 months ago and got new PBs in most of the games. Uh, but I want to do another big series marathon at the end of this month. And, uh, you know, got to gotta brush up on all my games, get used to speed running everything again. Let's do it. Let's speed run some video games. Talked to Trina earlier tonight, actually. She was in a good mood. Uh, hold on. My controls are not right. Which is weird. They should be. Yeah. So I want to, I never need to open the map for anything. So I move the map button to triangle or I move the map button uh, to nothing and make the triangle button inventory because that's easier to push quickly than select or share since I use a PS4 controller playing on PS TV skip I want to set to X and circle so I can just like mash face buttons to skip through cutscenes that's pretty much everything I ch that's all I really change 
There we go. Hey, ZPL. Hey, Skulls. All right. Whoops. Now nah, we're skipping. Now we're skipping things. Hey, Googie. I am doing pretty good. Other than having a really Cheryl? whacked out sleep schedule. Is that Cheryl? I'm doing pretty well. Last couple months have been kind of rough because I've been dealing with some teeth problems, but... Where are you going? Finally got into the dentist. Hey, wait! Stop! Uh, a little over a week ago now. Everything is pretty much healed up. So I'm doing a lot better now than I have been in a, in a little while. Tooth issue sucks so bad. It really does. It is some of the worst fucking pain. Like, I've managed to hurt myself in a lot of really stupid ways over the years since I was a kid. Especially because, like, I used to play football and skateboard and do all sorts of shit where, like, I've broken bones and had really bad cuts and stabs and things like that. Tooth pain is on a whole nother fucking level. What is this? When you have to deal with like What's a broken or infected tooth, it's fucking agony. Uh, thankfully got everything taken care of, at least for now. I still have other dental work that I need done, but all the the main stuff that's been like painful lately has been taken care of. What's that? Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? to this place. I accidentally clicked on the radio. Like I interacted with it too soon. Before the uh this is not a dream line. So, lost a little bit of time there because of the uh text popping up. Although I don't actually know for sure with this game, if uh, in-game time continues to tick whenever there's text on the screen that like freezes the image like that. In-game time might actually pause during during that with this game. I, I'm not entirely sure how IGT works for Silent Hill 1, to be honest, because for I've never used an in-game timer for this game uh, when emulating it. And with other games like Silent Hill 2, 3, and 4, there's uh, PC versions where we can like track in-game time and um, kind of see exactly when the game is counting time and when it doesn't. Because like some games count cutscenes and others don't. Uh, some games count you know, different little aspects, whether you have your inventory open or if you're interacting with something.
Or like if you have your map open, opening your, your map in Silent Hill 4 pauses the in-game timer. But with Silent Hill 1, I don't know. I don't know exactly how the IGT works, when it's ticking and when it isn't. Unlucky. Hey, Kibbs. Hope you're doing well today, dude. Yeah, honestly, coming back to Silent Hill 1, I feel like I, I never really grinded out really good runs for this game the way I did for some of the other games in the series. And even though I'm still, like, you know, minutes, <laughs> four or five minutes away from, like, world record times, even when I haven't run this game in a long time, I feel like I do okay with it. Gotta get better at bumping. There's a spot you can bump with that door where uh, you'll interact with it instead of uh, having to watch the bumping into it animation. Hey, Star Garden. Sort of like that where you can interact with something as you're bumping into it. A lot of weird little quirks to Silent Hill 1. Nub after dark stream. I mean, it's real after dark. It's so after dark that in like an hour and a half, at least where I live, it's going to be daylight. My sleep schedule has just been completely out of whack. Oh, whoops. Keep forgetting to uh, split. Breakfast with Nubstream? That works. Turn too far left. Yeah, I went for it anyway, just in case I'd catch the edge of that hitbox, but no. Oh, you're following. Why are you over the... Ugh. You shouldn't be there. And I missed the interaction there. Oh my god. You're like on the wrong side of the hallway. I don't know how to make Harry move in a fucking line.
I might get hit here. Oh, lucky. Pretty good first part of school there. Usually I tend to get grabbed and hit a lot more. Make carry run in a straight line to save my fucking life. Well. Speed running by daylight. Uh nice. I'm like, <laughs> this guy's gonna be right in my way. Didn't do anything. One of these days, I should actually, like, double check the world record route and see what I'm supposed to do here. If I should just go straight to the roof, I'm going to go straight for the roof this time. Or if I should do the second floor key first. Here, I need to go this way, get the shotgun, use the ball. floor. I'm gonna spend the time grabbing the extra health drink because I still have had such a lucky first half of Midwitch not getting hit that I feel like I'm gonna get hit a ton of times when I get to like the sewers or float stinger. Hey guys, hope you are strong and healthy like Minmo. Dude, I don't think anybody can grow as strong as healthy, as strong and healthy as Minmo. I just think that is scientifically impossible. 
But I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. Getting stuck on little chairs and stuff in that classroom. Recently, the biggest gaming website in my country made an article how it just got confirmed. Uh, White dots in Silent Hill are, in fact, just snow. Yeah, you know, information that is directly given to you by a main character in a cutscene. When Kaufman says it's snowing out this time of year. It's funny because there's this, like, um, Mandela effect. When I... Because I saw a lot of people talking about it on Twitter. Because Masahiro Ito tweeted about it. And, of course, there's, like, all these people who are like... I've played these games, you know, since they came out. And I always thought it was Ash. Even before the movie. And maybe there is a lot of people out there like that. But I think they're liars. <laughs> Personally, I think they're liars. I think that... In my memory, like, uh, when this game came out, I loved horror. I talked about this game with a lot of other friends who were horror fans. Uh, back in, like, 1999 and, you know, all, all the years leading up to the movie coming out... I don't recall anybody ever being like, do you think the snow in Silent Hill 1 is ash? Because it's never implied in the game anywhere. Like, that was 100% just, like, not even a fan theory or anything like that until the movie existed. At least as far as I can recall. <laughs> Liar, that's a lie. That's what I think. I think it's people who are probably... I don't know. They didn't get into the Silent Hill series until later. But they... They're like... I don't know, wanting to sound like they're OGs for the sake of their... Their argument, their Twitter argument. Just to, just to be like, plenty of people all you know, thought it was Ash back in the day. It's never even remotely hinted at in the game. Or in Silent Hill 3, as like a sequel, since that kind of looks back onto this. Yeah, or just misremembering it, if it is just like a full-on Mandela effect type of thing. Because, like, nobody, nobody was confused about what the white dots were in Silent Hill 1 back then, like, as far as I can remember. Were you... and then the movie came along and fucked it all up. It's 
Silent Hill is people. See, those are the old school theories. Those are those are the fan theories that I can remember being around since like 99, 2000. Where it's like, you're crazy and you're just going around killing people. You're not monsters. And then the devs full on lean into that popular fan theory with Silent Hill 3 with Vincent just literally as a joke that is the devs saying through Vincent's voice like we're playing a joke on you we're having a giggle Is this PSN? Uh, yes. This is PlayStation Network version transferred from my PlayStation 3 to my uh, PS TV. Since you can't just like do it directly, it made you do weird shit. I completely forgot to uh, split. Some of those transitions are 20 years long. And I thought PSTV was like a little bit faster with that. Maybe it's the way I have it set up or something. I honestly have no idea. remember PSN taking super long sometimes. I feel like when I used to do it on PS3, um, it was a lot longer. And then to me, like, based on that comparison, PSTV's faster. Because what, what even is the fastest as far as loading time stuff goes now? Is it PS2 with fast disk speed or uh, PSP? Isn't PSP like super fast or something? <laughs> I forget. Yeah, same. A lot of stuff I know I looked at and compared like seven or eight years ago. Uh, whoops. Now that information is just not in my brain anymore. That is not what I wanted to do. Hey, LC. Hope you're doing well today. See, like this one, that transition always feels a little bit long, but... I don't know if that one is tends to take a bit on every version...
Lisa keeps distracting me? Good. Good. That's why Lisa's there. Because if you were paying too much attention to the run, you would realize, like, man, this guy kind of sucks at this game. But luckily, there's a Lisa face there to distract you. No one watches speedruns for the runs? Thank you. Somebody gets it. PSTV should still be the fastest, I think. I will definitely defer to your knowledge, Borizel, because... You for sure know these runs much better. Ah. Hmm. That's an actual tragedy. That means I wasted those shots too. So I'm going to have to pick up the extra shotgun ammo in nowhere. No idea where PSP stands over PS2 fast disk speed. See, I feel like I remember somebody figuring out that PSP was like a lot faster than expected. Something about the way that it reads and writes with memory. I've got no idea. I'm forgetting to split. But see, maybe that's me having my own the snow everyone used to think the snow is ash moment. Maybe that's my uh this that's my own false memory <laughs> hey python did that go through uh did what go through if you said something in chat Next day, Masahiro Ito tweets. <laughs> ASCII art of Patrick Starr. Aw. I don't think I had chat things set up to uh, filter that, but... I don't know. Whenever the, like, really bad waves of, like, hate raids and shit started happening on Twitch, I, I kind of locked down a lot of chat stuff. I took away, like, link posting and, I don't know, maybe I set some other stuff wrong. If it filtered out. Or maybe Twitch just automatically filters some stuff out now. I don't know. It really annoys me how fans think PSP is faster than PS2. I would love it if Masahiro Ito just suddenly started tweeting, like, very specific... <laughs> very specific, like, technical details of Silent Hill games.
as if like Team Silent really would have had anything to do with like a lot of those ports. Whoops. I literally skipped this hallway in my head. Like, I was ready to quick turn from the the other church altar. And my brain was just like, quick turn. And completely skipped the fact that I have to run down that hallway. Romper skip, here we go. First try, super easy. Just watch, just watch this. The cleanest romper skip you've ever seen. Shit. Cleanest romper skip you've ever seen. Way too far up. Little bit further forward. Little bit further forward. It's not even facing this direction. Keep hitting the walk button too soon because I don't want to do what I did the first time see that's too far forward and he missed me entirely he missed me entirely How? How how are you not hitting me? Am I bugged? Do I like not have collision? didn't quite work. All right, have a good night, Ducky. I just ran right down the fucking stairs. Goodbye run? Yeah. A lot of my runs are going to die right here just cuz this is a really finicky out of bounds skip. But I'm not I'm not doing resets or anything because I still need to practice the whole run like Keep hitting walk a little bit too late and just flying down the stairs now That I think should do it Romper skip is definitely going to be like my biggest run killing moment, which is a shame. I had such a good midwitch. 
I don't usually uh, do as well as I did on this, on most runs. Compared to most runs, my my midwitch was uh, better than usual. No run until Romper. Everything up until Romper is the intro. Fair. It's unfortunately, kind of how it is. Doesn't really matter how good you do everything else if you don't get a good Romper skip. Hey, Sam Jazz. Good morning. Glad to see Power's on. Uh, gonna have a snack and try to lay down. Good luck with the speedruns. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad the power is back on. We keep having power outages. Um, we had a storm a few days ago where uh, the power got knocked out for several hours. Uh, one, you know, for one night, basically. And then um, it's been a couple of days since then. And our power went out again today. And we're wondering. I forgot to heal, dude. I took that damage in the float stinger fight. If the run wasn't dead before, dead now. And I didn't mean to continue. But yeah, uh, I'm guessing they, they wanted to um, fix something that was still broken from when the power got fucked during the, the lightning storm we had recently, so... Who knows? Who knows? I just want our power to stop going out randomly. Hey, Nor. Happy Friday. Or I guess Cheryl? Saturday now. Is that Cheryl? 5.30 a.m. Saturday morning. 3 a.m. Big Apple. Where are you going? Hey, wait. Stop. Bolts and lightning, very, very annoying. Luckily, like, me and Rachel were so set for the power going out as far as, like, lights. Um, because we have, like, the way our cabinets and our pantries and stuff are in our kitchen, 
our our kitchen doesn't have like really super good light and it doesn't get into our pantries and cabinets super well so we put all these little uh led rechargeable motion detector lights inside of our cabinets and uh our pantry So whenever the the power goes out, we can just grab those. They're like magnetic. And we've got lights that we can use for like every room. So once the power was out, we were like, okay, <laughs> grab a bunch of these light bars. Put, you know, one in the living room, one in the bathroom. So at the very least, we're not just like What's fumbling that? around in the dark. Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? This is not a dream. What's happening to this place? Dude, I'm so bad at picking this key up. <laughs> I used to be so much better at just like stopping right on it. And so often now I just run right past it. Although, grabbing the key out of that cop car reminded me of something something else that I saw on uh, Twitter kind of regarding Silent Hill 1 development. Hey, Ayana. Oh god, this overlay? I know, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. It's the best overlay you've ever seen on Twitch. Um, but yeah, I saw uh, a tweet from one of those like Silent Hill fact type of uh, Twitter accounts that was saying that Silent Hill 1 was originally supposed to be set in the Midwest and their proof is from the Silent Hill trade demo and early builds of uh, Silent Hill 1. The cop car that you grabbed that key out of used to say uh, Buffalo Police Department, which is, you know, like Buffalo, Buffalo Illinois. Um, and Team Silent had apparently uh, gone to Chicago, Illinois, to do some uh, research for reference material which they they do that that's very common but i don't think it means the game was originally meant to be set there like literally there i think it was just their uh their reference material that came from there the same way silent hill 2 uses uh places around san bruno california 
to uh to make up a lot of the city streets and building fronts um like they used areas in California in San Bruno for reference but it doesn't mean that Silent Hill 2 was supposed to be set there it's just the reference material so I think those versions especially because the, it's only in like it's not in any of the final versions of Silent Hill 1 where the cop car says Buffalo it it it's only in demos and trade demo and like early builds I think it's a bit of a stretch saying that the game was originally supposed to be set in the Midwest, like set in Illinois. I think it's just where their reference material came from. Because they've talked about how in many an interview, and it's apparent through many in-game references, direct references to like Stephen King, that the game is supposed to, to be set in in Maine. And then later on, they even use Maine state addresses uh, to reference some locations, like uh, Heaven's Night in Silent Hill 2. There's a soundtrack where they give a like fake address for Heaven's Night. And it's a, it's a main state address. But still, one of those interesting things, interesting bit of information that is real. You know, early versions of Silent Hill 1 used reference material, like the, the cop car that said Buffalo on it. But then sort of making a, a leap, an assumption that the game was literally supposed to be set there. One of those easy ways that like misinformation can can kind of spread where it's not all false information. It's technically some true element. But the way that it's framed, they're like implying something else. No, we're getting grabbed. got so lucky before <laughs> kind of taking these really close lines with the light off and just hoping that I don't get grabbed and I fucking missed the stairs yeah compared to like my my last attempt this such a bad midwitch which is typical for midwitch for me I usually lose a shit ton of time here. Like after a while, the grinding and ringing sound just feels like out of body tinnitus. I mean, that's not too far off. Oh. 
Although, to be honest, I play these games so much that there's a lot of those kind of sounds that I just sort of tune out now. Although it is interesting, even for stuff that you feel like you're kind of used to, once it's not there, it's a lot more noticeable, I think, than you than you realize. Oh my god, I'm just gonna get grabbed by every single mumbler in this building. Attempt to get like an hour of sleep. <laughs> Good luck. I wish you well. Oh, that's weird. Why are uh, things doubling up? Double alert power. Powder Keg Cellar. Thank you for the Prime sub. Very much appreciate it. Thank you for the support. But yeah, going back to earlier, talking about like the sound effects, how you feel like you tune them out. Like I feel like I tune the radio sound out of Silent Hill 1 just from how much I've played it. But I used to feel that way about Silent Hill 2's radio until I started speedrunning it. Where I got so used to playing and hearing the game with the radio on, but when you speedrun Silent Hill 2 PC, you actually skip getting the uh, the wooden plank and the radio. So for the whole run, you're going through Silent Hill 2 with no radio sound. And I can remember when I was very first getting used to running the game and using that skip, um, it took me some some getting used to. I'm like, the sound is weird just hearing enemies walk around and no radio sound that you're used to accompanying it. I think it says a lot for the, the sound design of these games where even if you remove like any element of it, even if it's like a smaller element of the audio, it's really noticeable. Literally every single enemy in this fucking school is biting my dick. And I'm having the most trouble with stairs. Probably should have grabbed that health drink, but you know what? Fuck it. If the rest of the run <laughs> goes that badly, then it's fine. We'll just die in the sewers again.
the static is practically a supporting character. It kind of is. It kind of is. It's the same same deal if you play with um if you get used to seeing the game any of the first four games especially with um the noise effect the uh the staticky screen having the uh the noise effect on the screen getting used to seeing the game that way and then playing on like an emulator or pc port uh, where you can disable it. Or even on the original games, you could disable it. But especially if you're playing, like, Enhanced Edition and stuff like that. Huh? It's, like, weirdly noticeable. Now, some people prefer it. Depending on what I'm doing, a lot of times, especially when I'm streaming the games, noise filter is one of those things that looks really nice when you're sitting and playing a game yourself. But if you're streaming a game, the noise filter on the Silent Hill games um, a lot of times just kind of fucks with your bitrate and it makes everything look worse. But at the same time, seeing the games, like, really clearly, when you've gotten used to them being kind of dark and fuzzy, it's like a whole nother experience. Like, these games are made in such a way where every little detail aspect of them, if you even slightly change it, it's noticeable. Yo, big no-no. Back at it with the 13 months. Thank you for the luck. And thank you so much for the support, dude. Greater than the sum of its parts. I think that's why... I mean, there's a lot of reasons why the HD collection was so poorly received. But I think that's why... Were you it was a lot worse off received than I think Konami anticipated. Because I'm willing to bet a lot of the problems with HD Collection, the more minor stuff, they probably were like, eh, people won't notice. Except that with these games, like... If you're constantly running through foggy city streets and you change the texture of that fog and you change the texture of those streets it just doesn't look right whereas for like a, a lot of other games if you're doing remasters or, or you know things like that you probably wouldn't really care about something like a street texture or a building texture but those little environmental details in Silent Hill games, like, you change that stuff and it stands out like a sore thumb.
Kaufman. Wait, don't shoot. Kaufman immediately shoots. Magic Kool-Aid. It almost feels like Konami was trying to nuke its own console gaming business in the early to mid-2010s. Um, I don't think that they necessarily were, like, trying to do that intentionally. But was that? I definitely think they didn't care as much because they have so many other business ventures outside of gaming that make the company still very profitable. And all those other business ventures are like much lower end investment for much more potential profit. So I think when it came to gaming, they just didn't give a shit. Yo, Kane, Cotero. Missed several streams, but glad to catch up. Welcome back. And thank you for the bits. Very much appreciate that. blocked me. I think it's apathy more than anything else. Exactly. I, I think it is just uh, they're willing to put a certain level of investment and beyond that they, they don't really give a shit. Like at its at its heart, Konami is a business. There's a, like all obviously all major game studios have to be businesses or you know function as businesses. They need to be profitable. They need to be successful. They've got tons of employees and people they need to pay. And um, bottom line, like they have to be a business. But Konami is because they do so much more than just gaming. They don't have to put as much investment, initial investment, into their their game projects the way that they used to. Because back in the early days of gaming, games were wildly, like, profitable. Because you could just get, like, a team of, like, 30 to 40 people... and have them, you know, put together a game and potentially you make a really good one and it's not a whole lot of money to invest initially and it has potential to, to give you a big turnaround profit. Now, games are more like uh, big Hollywood productions where even smaller titles have like millions of dollars initially invested and there's no guarantee that you're going to sell enough units to like make that back so when you have game companies that are 
basically just do games. They don't really have any other business ventures. They're going to put a lot more effort and, you know, sort of respect for the final product behind, like, what they're making. But when you have Konami looking at it from a business perspective, where gaming is just one little thing that they do, because they also run gyms and health spas and insurance companies and um, all sorts of other things outside of gaming that are all very much profitable for them. They're going to look at it as just like, okay, here's our here's our limit of what we're how much we're going to give a shit. Even then, for example, EA is a millionaire, but they want to turn gaming into multiplayer crypto paradise. There's no excuse. Ah, eh, fair. I mean, yeah. That is a fair point. Hey, Cutter. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Was I dreaming? Gambling is ludicrous, sadly. And Konami's in on all sorts of gambling. Like, they have been for technically longer than they've done video games. Because Konami used to do, like, jukeboxes and uh, slot machines and just, like, gaming machines, arcades-type machines. And that was, like, their main business... And then they kind of shifted more into gaming, like arcade gaming and console gaming. I want to say later on into like the 80s. Because, I mean, they were doing a lot of stuff. There was a lot of like Nintendo, Famicom, Super Famicom. Of course, you know, Contra. And a lot of classic Konami arcade games. And from the 80s all the way up to, like, the early 2000s. Konami was doing really fucking well with games. Because they were, you know, they had a lot of really creative people working. Who uh, had a lot of experience with making games. And they were willing to let those people have a lot more creative control because the projects were smaller they were less being invested into games to develop them at the time so they didn't care as much about what game got made as long as you know it was something that they could sell to a certain degree then after that konami grew a lot as a company had a lot more involved you know businesses and ways of having profit. Oh man, all we had to do was talk about Konami business ventures to romper skip first try. But yeah, basically the the risk reward difference Shit, I was at a bad angle.
I got the first try romper skip, but I was I couldn't go straight through the door, so I got a bad angle. Oh, and we landed right on the fucking stairwell. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is fine. I can't believe I landed perfectly on the stairs trying to recover from going the wrong direction after romper skip first try. What what a weird series of events. Where it's like, Romper Skip, first try. All right, I'm going to save a bunch of time. Oh shit, I'm going the wrong direction. I'm going to lose a bunch of time. Oh, I lost a little bit of time and then ended up closer to where I wanted to be than if it had been successful. Arguably, at one point, there wasn't much of a distinction. Gaming... Oh, yeah. Gaming is still code for gambling in some places. True. True. Because there's lots of ways, especially in Japan, that uh, gambling laws and things like that are sort of skirted. That is the one transition when you're running back to get to the sewers here. Where it kind of bugs out a little bit. I don't think I've ever actually had it crash there, but it always feels like it's going to. I have to heal. Good. Hey, Kerlaus. Thank you for the luck. I love the way the animation sort of doesn't finish playing out when you grab that key. Harry starts putting his hands up like he's going to bump against the wall, but then stops at the last second like, ooh, a key. kind of a weird line there when I came up from the the ladder because normally oh my god really normally there's a scratcher there that will uh, take a swing at me but I guess I kind of went around him
Uh, hey, Nub, what's your favorite thing about the music and soundtrack from Silent Hill franchise? Been studying Akira's music composing. Would you like to know your thoughts? Um... Favorite thing about the music and soundtrack. Akira Yamaoka is just able to really understand what kind of emotion and what sound to sort of add to something to make it what he wants it to be like thematically. He's really good at that. Like being able to say, I want the player to feel tension during this particular moment and I'm going to make them feel that tension by using a dentist drill in the background of like really uh, heavy metallic rhythmic banging but in, at the same time the same composer can also do like theme of Laura and promise where he's instead of going for something quite so like heavy as like that tension and that in your face uh sort of impact uh of of that side of the music you also have like the really sorrowful you know guitar and piano pieces where you get more of a sense of the the sadness or the melancholy of a situation. He's really good at picking and choosing his instruments and sounds and sound effects to utilize with his music. In order to like bring to mind a certain air of emotion like there's there's a lot of games that have like really good music really well composed good music that doesn't fit the scene that well like I kind of feel that way about some of the, not all of it, but some of the Resident Evil series music. Where there's a lot of really good, memorable Resident Evil music, but it doesn't always necessarily fit kind of the mood or of, of like the situation that's going on in the context of the game, even though like the song is good. Whereas like, yeah, with Silent Hill, Akira Yamaoka does such a good job of like, okay, you're just going to hear <laughs> rhythmic whirring machinery off in a distance. See right here, the camera angle and just sort of the mysterious nature of this lighthouse combined with this music. He knows how to use that, that bass sound dropping out. <sighs> Rhythmically sort of repeating it at like that slow pace. It's just the right kind of tone where what you're doing, like it adds to the mystery, the, the mysterious vibe of this location, this scene that's happening. His choice of music and instrument and tone or e even like these little more specific things is uh, is always really really spot on. I was watching somebody's video on playing Silent Hill One for the first time. Had an odd take that it had mu that the music that didn't fit. That it had music that doesn't fit. Um, 
Like the music in the cafe when you wake up with Sybil? Didn't like it. Oh no, see, I disagree, but then again, I feel like some of that stuff is also very referential. Like, I love Twin Peaks. So you wake up in the diner in this scary situation with this mysterious person, and you've got that weird Twin Peaksy mystery going on base coming in. Um, it it adds to it. It adds to that weirdness, and and again, it feels very direct reference to Twin Peaks. So maybe if you're like not a fan of Twin Peaks or you've never seen Twin Peaks, that music might seem or feel a little more out of place than it does to someone who has seen it and does kind of understand that, uh, that vibe, that tone. Sounds like a pretty shallow understanding of horror. I mean, I wouldn't say shallow. It's just, it's somebody else's opinion. Like, it's music. Music is going to be super subjective. Whether somebody likes it or doesn't like it or feels like it fits or doesn't fit. Um, no, that's totally fine. I, I, can, I can understand the opinion without saying, like, that it's a shallow understanding or anything. But I do feel... If you understand a lot of the stuff that Team Silent used as reference, the things that they they were much more directly influenced by, I think having an understanding of those things enhances the Silent Hill experience when you're playing through these games. Like if you if you read some Stephen King, uh, if you if you've seen Twin Peaks or a lot of you know David Lynch's movies, um, you know if you're if you're familiar with that that type of that type of media, I think it really helps with the mindset of like what's in the game. Fucking push the button. Oh man, we are struggle bussing. We are struggle bussing. Cat mech, it's so dang early. It is, it is early or late or however you want to think of it. But welcome back. Thank you so much for the resub. Very, very much appreciate that. Thank you for the support. See, like, how could you hear that music? And say, dude, why do I always do this? I always go into the wrong room. This is a dream. What's happening to this place? How could you hear that music and be like, this doesn't fit? Cat! Cat Link and the Cat Link Raiders. Cat, thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Cat PB raid. Did we have some peanut butter? Was there some peanut butter tonight?
We on PB pace? Uh, probably not actually, but you know. I never really used uh, splits for Silent Hill 1. My splits are kind of just there. Final run of the night, just barely PB'd. Hey, barely PB, still a PB. My personal best for this game is from like 10 months ago. <laughs> so it's been a while and I just started like running this game again uh, a few nights, a few nights ago. So we'll see how, how everything goes. I am messing up. But thank you again so much for the raid. Congrats on the personal best. And welcome everybody who came over from Cat's channel. For anybody who's new here, I'm Nub Zombie. Uh, I stream a lot of different stuff, mostly horror. I do a lot of, uh, I play pretty much all the Silent Hill games, literally the whole series. Uh, if there's any one game or series that I'm known for, it's Silent Hill. Uh, I speedrun all of them and do uh, in-depth story playthroughs, challenge runs, all sorts of stuff with the uh, with all the games in the Silent Hill series. Tonight I'm specifically working on Silent Hill 1 new game easy difficulty speedruns. Uh, but I also play some other stuff, usually a lot of Dead by Daylight, uh, Back for Blood, and uh, Silent Hill have been like my main, my main three lately. But yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for the luck. Hey, no grab. No grab? No grab! I forgot to split such a long time ago. See, I, I told you, I'm not used to splitting with Silent Hill 1. Silent Hill 1, our leaderboard, Submissions are all ranked by in-game time, and because we're playing on a console, like I'm playing on PSTV, there's no way to uh, to track in-game time. And real-time splits are not really super accurate because there are things that you might do faster or slower from run to run, such as how quickly you skip cutscenes, that don't necessarily add towards your in-game time but will affect your real-time splits so i'm not used to having splits for silent hill one i just started doing it uh earlier this week <laughs> so as said they literally are just kind of there they don't really mean anything But we can pretend they mean everything. Look at all that gold split time save. This was not a great Daddy. run. Cheryl. Thank you, Daddy. Manually splitting is rough. Always forget to split. Um, I just have to get used to it. And I'm not used to it with Silent Cheryl. Hill 1. I've never actually run a game with an auto splitter. I've always done manual splits for everything this? that I've run. This can't be happening. Cheryl. It's just that with Silent Hill Cheryl. 1, since there's no way to track it, IGT, I just used to not have splits. I would just do runs and then see what I get at the results screen. Hey Nubs, when will we get new story runs? Uh this month and next month. Tomorrow, 
or Sunday. Um, I guess tomorrow is Sunday at this point. Uh, I'll be doing a Silent Hill 1 story playthrough. And then on Tuesday, I'll be practicing Silent Hill 2 speedruns. So the idea for the next couple of months is basically to spend a week doing speedrun practice and then finish the weekend with a story playthrough. So this past week has been Silent Hill 1 speedrunning and then this weekend I'll do Silent Hill 1 story playthrough next week. Silent Hill 2 speedrunning next weekend, Silent Hill 2 story playthrough, and so on and so forth for all of the games. All the mainline games, anyway. classic streams yeah kind of i'm still gonna be doing some other stuff outside of that i'll have some days where i get together with my friends and we just play some dead by daylight or back for blood but 3526 so not not actually a pb my in-game time personal best is uh 3414 but only a little over a minute off from that de-rusting after not having really played this game in the last 10 months. <laughs> we go again. special spooky things planned for October or is it too soon to ask um October is usually my catch up month where I take a break from playing Silent Hill and play a bunch of different uh horror games that, that I've been meaning to play um I've been wanting to go through the Fatal Frame series so I'm probably going to be doing that outside of that I don't know yet hey wait stop but uh for sure, I want to play all the Fatal Frame games in October. Because um, I've played and streamed Fatal Frame 1 and 2. Um, but it's been a long time since I've gone through them. And I've played Fatal Frame 3. I never streamed it, and I never finished it. And then anything after three, uh, I have not played. So I know four is on the Wii and I need to get a uh, custom patch. Like a, a English mod patch, basically. And then five, Maiden of Blackwater is just on Steam. So that should be easy enough. this what's going on here Two Wii edition and four are amazing. 
I'll have to look into that dude, man, because I'm not even sure what versions uh, I'm going to play for October yet. Because there is some minor differences I know between PS2 and original Xbox. Huh. Radio. What's going on with that radio? But I completely forgot that there is, like, the Wii edition. This is not a dream. What's happening to this place? I'm sorry, but this emote is cursed and I must use it more. Good. Do it. Yeah, I, I went for some kind of cursed emotes. Those are honestly placeholders. Because uh, I just have a bunch of emote slots with nothing in them right now. So I was like, okay, I needed five follower emotes. I photoshopped some Silent Hill faces. <laughs> some Silent Hill character faces. Some awkward faces. That, uh... I was like, okay. It'll work for now, and then we'll uh, we'll have something better when I have money to commission art again. I'm planning on making some more little similar ones, just sort of zoomed in faces, awkward faces from characters in the series. Because they're placeholders, they'll, they will be more popular than the actual stuff. <laughs> Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should have waited until I just had actual artwork. Because <laughs> now everyone's going to like the placeholders. And be sad when they're gone. The Kaufman face is probably my favorite. Um, because it looks really similar to uh, avoiding the puzzles, uh, avoiding the puddles, uh, Alex Valle face. And it's, and it's legit, like, that's official, real artwork. <laughs> Thank you, Black Wolf MJ, for, for the Valle face in chat for comparison. <laughs> it's actual artwork of, of Kaufman. But it reminds me so much of the Valle face, I, I kind of fell in love with it. Watch a little bit of Evo? No, I need to catch up on... I need to catch up on VODs. I haven't seen anything yet. I've been keeping track of my friend Ekdysis, uh, who's out there at Evo trying to compete using a chainsaw controller. <laughs> we we are Ekdysis stands in this house, so... I don't know if any of his matches were on stream or not. Hey, Tuply, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Oh my god, quick turn. Thank you so much, Tuply. Was it for Strive? Uh, no, I think that was for Street Fighter V. I think that was Street Fighter V that he used the uh, chainsaw controller. He was playing Street Fighter V. He was playing King of Fighters. He was playing Skull Girls and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Oh, and Catherine. That's the other one. He was playing Catherine.
Eck living his best life right now. I know, right? God, I I have not been to Evo since 2013. And I would absolutely love to go again. Hell, I, I want to go to like just social events and shit again in general. But I don't want monkey COVID pox. Hopefully AGDQ. Hopefully. Maxi. Sorry we were caught up in conversation there. Let me catch up. But Maxi, thank you so much for the 65 months. My guy. And another very big reason that I would love to start going to social events again. Because I miss seeing your faces. Your collective faces. Still found her. Shit, I forgot that you can mess with that now. You can change things. I haven't messed with my founder's badges at all. have to get KBBQ again. Oh my god, yes. Absolutely. I'm always, always down for Korean barbecue. Why? Dude, and the other one walked in front of me? Grabbed and body blocked. It's like I'm playing DVD. TwitchCon's being relaxed on restrictions? Yeah, that's sad. That's that's a big sad in my book. Because there's a lot of people I know who were like super excited about being at TwitchCon. And then they basically announced they're not doing any sort of precaution stuff whatsoever. And so many people were just like, never mind. gonna go but yeah that's definitely a no from you yeah we are very much in the let the vulnerable die phase of this pandemic unfortunately I think we're sort of in this weird I don't know may I I want to say this without just sounding like an old man old man shakes fist at technology but I feel like 
we're sort of at a point in society where so many people are used to things just being like a fad where there is something going on in the world and everyone pays attention to it while it's active and like on Twitter but then after a certain amount of time you just don't care anymore and unfortunately I think the vast majority of people uh, are kind of at this point where like COVID that's so two years ago even though it's still obviously a very big concern but people sort of think of it as like that's yesterday's news so I don't care anymore people who probably didn't care that much to begin with but even more so now are just like I'm just tired of being inside like I'm tired of caring so I'm gonna pretend there's not a problem TwitchCon EU went relatively smooth. I think they're judging it based on that, maybe. But a lot of people got COVID even there. That's the thing, is, like, you're still going to have upticks in cases if you're going to have social events, especially with, you know, not even masks or anything. Like, that's the main thing, is just masks and occupancy limits. <laughs> in particular rooms and areas and that that would make such a huge difference to so many people did they sell more tickets by having no restrictions or less by not having them i've heard a lot of people i i don't know how i i know a lot of people who are friends and familiar with a lot of the people who run like TwitchCon um, and a lot of the staff behind it and they are thinking that sales numbers, ticket numbers and attendance is going to be super super low but at this point who knows yo Clarden with the 14 months. Welcome back. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Katrina. Hope you're doing well. And the wonderful faces. I'm glad everybody likes the new placeholder emotes. I didn't even mention... <laughs> I I didn't even talk about them. I wasn't going to make like a big deal about like new emotes cuz I 100% planned on them just being simple little placeholders. <laughs> and uh everyone's really enjoying them. So I'm good. I'm I'm glad. <laughs> the cursed Cheryl face. I'm I'm glad people are enjoying it. Mistakes were made. Oh my god, just look at the thing. I'm doing good, Katrina. It's been a rough year so far. Not all bad, uh, just busy. Some bad. Uh, I, I had some tooth problems and stuff that I was dealing with for the last couple months, but finally got in last week to see a dentist and got all, a lot of those problems taken care of. So I'm feeling much better now that I don't have uh, dental pain to worry about. And then uh, I moved last year from Texas to Georgia 
and uh, Rachel and I bought a, a house back in March. So we were we were pretty busy from January to March, just like selling the old house, buying this new house, huh? and then getting like moved in and set up. And then, uh, yeah, and then tooth stuff, health stuff started becoming a problem. So like, haven't been, haven't been online, haven't been streaming as much as I would have liked to, uh, as much as I would have, have really liked to have been streaming by, by this point. Leave, Harry. Wonder which Silent Hill is your favorite? Silent Hill 2. Despite the fact that there's a shit ton of Silent Hill 1 emotes and stuff right now. But yeah, if you want to know how I rank the Silent Hill games, which are my favorites and least favorites, uh, you can type exclamation point faves, F-A-V-E-S in chat. getting to split. Thank you, dude, man. Is, uh, is this hard mode for puzzle? Uh, there is not different, uh, puzzle difficulty in Silent Hill 1. Like, Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3, they, uh, they give you two different settings. You have your puzzle difficulty and your action difficulty that you can set like easy, normal, hard individually. Silent Hill 1 is just easy, normal, hard. Uh, and all it really affects is action. Puzzles are always the same. Surprised Origins is so low on the list. I really, really dislike Origins because I really, really like Silent Hill 1. And Origins is kind of a hot mess when it tries to be a prequel to this game. On top of some really wonky gameplay stuff. And like there's a little bit of okay stuff with Travis and his character and his backstory but they don't do enough with it because they're also trying to shoehorn it into being a prequel um yeah yeah Origins also for anybody who doesn't know was an absolute nightmare when it came to uh development so for Origins Origins was the first game other than the Silent Hill arcade game and I guess the Silent Hill play novel if we're being technical but Origins was the first mainline game that was not made by Team Silent Konami uh, basically gave the developing rights to uh, a studio called Climax. And Climax has two major branches, or at least did back in the day when this game was made. Uh, or when Origins was made, sorry. So, Climax LA and Climax UK. So, the game was given to Climax LA first, and they were making and over the shoulder like Resident Evil 4 style action game like shooting game 
with a story that was loosely based on the TV show Scrubs. The T like the comedy hospital TV show Scrubs. This is not random stuff that you are hearing right now. This is legitimately the development history of Silent Hill Origins. These are things that the director himself said. Um, that version of the game, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, was shown to Konami, and the director said there was no way they could release that as a game, that it would be hated and ridiculed. And Konami said, okay, well, we'll transfer the development from Origins... Uh, excuse me. We'll, we'll transfer the development of Origins from Climax Studios in LA to the UK branch and we'll let the UK team redo it. But they have to do it with the remaining time and the remaining budget that Climax LA hadn't already used. So Climax UK basically had to look at all of the assets that Climax LA had made and be like, none of this is usable. We have to start completely over. And make Origins basically from the ground up with half the budget and half the time frame to do so. Because that first version was so bad. And then for the version that actually did release, the one that Climax UK had to basically redo, the director even said, like, he went on record in interviews that, like, he didn't think it was a good idea to do a prequel to the original game and how, like, everything was a disaster. So yeah, Origins, yeah, legitimately, it's it's kind of a, a weird miracle in a way that anything got released, given how Origins kind of turned out, but I don't know. If it's, if it's one of the ones that you enjoy, if it's one of the ones that you're a fan of, more power to you, but I do not like Origins. It's to me, it's not very fun to play. It does not do a great job of capturing like the the feel of Silent Hill. Like you have those moments, right? You're you've got some dark hallways and some foggy streets and some Akira Yamo some Akira Yamaoka music. And and your your brain kinda goes, Okay, this is like Silent Hill. And then by the end of the game, like, you're hurling a toaster at Satan after Michael Kaufman knocked you out with sleeping gas inside, like, an ancient Egyptian burial chamber. And if your brain at that point is not going, what the fuck is this? If, you're, if your brain by that point is going, oh yeah, Silent Hill. This, this is just like Silent Hill. Then more power to you uh, but my my brain does not see it that way The other world starts existing in Silent Hill 1 because Cheryl returns, from my understanding. Yes. The the other world, the way that it is depicted in Silent Hill 1, 
is happening because Cheryl, the other half of Alessa's soul, has just returned to the town after being elsewhere for seven years. Now, there was all, always and already strange things going on in Silent Hill, but it wasn't always like the other world, the way that we see it in this game. That is something that just started occurring with Silent Hill 1. So the fact that it exists at all in Origins is a big flub. But how could you have a Silent Hill game without, like, what most people think of when they think of Silent Hill? They think of this other world, this nightmarish version of reality. So if that concept started with Silent Hill 1, and then they at some point were like, hey... Let's do a prequel to Silent Hill 1 and didn't take that into consideration. It's like, we have to make a Silent Hill game basically without Silent Hill. What's this? So obviously they have to change that and retcon things. And at that point, it's not a prequel anymore. It's not, it's not lining up with the source material. Why not just make a totally different, you know, horror game about a trucker. <sighs> I'm almost 100% sure this is slower. Instead of just going up the stairs. I don't know why my brain was like, I usually take the stairs and for some reason this time around, I was just like, you know, I'm hesitating on my movement. We're already not on great pace. Let's try the elevator. Because I'm always questioning myself during that part. If it's faster to take the stairs or take the elevator. But I guess that also kind of depends on how the in-game timer works. I don't know how much during those transitions it's actually counting. I thought with Alessa having powers... It's Alessa, by the way. A-L-E-S-S-A. -S Not Alyssa. Having powers being sacrificed, burnt, it would be possible for some form of other world to start to exist. Now, they, like, explicitly state that the other world occurring in Silent Hill 1 is a new thing. Like, when, you, when you're talking with Kaufman, when you're talking with Dahlia, this is a new phenomenon. There's always been weird stuff going on in the town of Silent Hill. They've lived there long enough to know that there's been weird shit in the past. Lisa talks about some of the weird shit that, that's gone on in the past. But the whole other world, the monsters, the snow falling out of season, um, all of that is new. That is all something that just started happening at the start of this game. Because Cheryl, the other half of Alessa's soul, after seven years of being gone has finally come back to the town and Alessa has essentially regained control of that aspect of her soul again. Uh, at what point does her soul split? During the ritual itself, when Alessa is seven years old. They're performing the ritual to impregnate her with a god. She becomes impregnated, but she doesn't want to go through with the ritual. So she splits her soul in two so that the ritual cannot complete. So it, it happens initially with her at the age of seven. And then she's basically just in a coma, being kept alive for the day that her other half of her soul will return. We see Dahlia uh, and Kaufman and the two doctors talking about that in, uh, in the one scene where Harry Inaba voices one of the doctors. Half the soul is lost. Yeah, that whole scene. 
explains a lot of that soul splitting what's going on this romper is just not paying attention to me get back here One could argue that the other world could exist between Soul Split and Harry finding Cheryl. But that's the thing is if the other world had existed at some point earlier in time, people like Kaufman and Dahlia would not be reacting to it as though this is something new going on in the town of Silent Hill. Like... If, if Alessa would have been manifesting the other world or if it would have been created at all at some point prior to Silent Hill 1, the people around Alessa are who would have been affected by it, the same as it is in this game. Like, it's her nightmare. It's, it's her affecting people in her life. So it still would have been Kaufman. It still would have been Dahlia. But yeah, at that point, neither, Di neither Dahlia nor Kaufman react to anything going on in this game as though it's happened before. Which, again, if Origins is supposed to be the prequel, where we see Dahlia and Kaufman literally in the other world, Kaufman having sex with Lisa in the other world and then having a conversation with Travis telling them that he needs to try harder to leave yet in this game Kaufman is like I've never seen anything like this before have you ever seen such aberrations and it's snowing out this time of year like, oh, did you get hit on your head? Did you forget all about Travis? And apparently being just fine walking around and even having intimate relations with somebody in the other world? Or is Origins just a hack writing job where none of it lines up with Silent Hill 1? You be the judge. <laughs> it's almost like it was slapped together with half the development time and budget of a normal game. Romper! the manuals say Lisa is 21 here? I don't remember the manuals giving an age. Um, I feel like we didn't get ages for characters until like the play novel? Fucking this up. Except for Cheryl. True. Like, Cheryl is the one 
consistent age that we do get. Oh shit, I quick turned. I know for sure they, they give an age for Sybil and Harry in the play novel. She would have been 16 taking care of Alessa because that was seven years ago. Yeah. And she's already... She's already a nurse in Origins. Like, she's not just a trainee or, like, in nursing school. Because when you see her, her name tag, I'm pretty sure it, it says that, you know, like, registered nurse. I just had to fucking blast his ass. Apparently that's the trick. Waste shotgun ammo on it. Line. Welcome. Only the PAL manual gives Lisa's age as 23. That would make sense why I am not familiar with it. Uh... I'm only familiar with, like, the NTSC manual. Hey, Yasha. I think you said you were from Texas and in a band. I mean, that is true. I was playing in a band back in the day. I have not in a very long time, but I've also moved away from Texas. You're still mostly correct. It's been a while. Dream more you own. Best voice. I mean, I'd stream every single day if not for, like, other stuff going on in life. I'm trying to get back to streaming a lot more often. Do you play any other Silent Hill games on here? All of them. Literally every single one of them. I've been mainly streaming the Silent Hill series since 2015. So I speedrun all of them. I do in-depth story playthroughs, uh, challenge runs. Pretty much for, for every game in the series. Even stuff like the play novel, the arcade game, Book of Memories, PT.
I've got no healing in the sewers. What is Silent Hill Book of Memories? It is the last Silent Hill game that ever fully released. It's for the PlayStation Vita, and it is a procedurally generated action dungeon crawler for the PlayStation Vita. And it looks like a cheap, free mobile game. And it is one of the worst things that I think I've ever played. Not even just like the worst Silent Hill game, like one of the worst games in general I've ever played. And I play it almost every Monday. Because I'm insane. Basically, I'm a big Silent Hill completionist. And there are 500 procedurally generated zones in Silent Hill Book of Memories. And I started a playthrough in 2018 to play all 500 zones. And I'm still working on it. I'm, I'm at like 355 out of 500. What do you think of the movie? It is not a good representation of the games. Um, but I like it on its own. Just as kind of its own thing. I need this health. Nightman, thank you so much for the 47 months. Very much appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. If Harry Mason were a real person, would he condemn Book of Memories? Yes. Because Harry is a writer. He knows a thing or two about writing books. We don't know that he's a good writer. Maybe he wrote Book of Memories. I mean, fair. We don't know how successful. Presumably not very. I mean, Harry doesn't seem to really live like a, a successful writer. Sean Bean is in it. Yeah. Thinking about the movie in terms of being like a faithful adaptation to the Silent Hill games, it's a it's a complete failure. It it uses some character names and that's about it as far as similarities. But watching it on its own like I enjoy bad horror movies. I watch a lot of like old shitty B movies and there's a plethora of old shitty horror B movies and the Silent Hill movie kind of reminds me of watching old shitty B <laughs> horror movies but with you know a bit more budget. When's Silent Hill commentary track? Like a commentary track for the for the movie? Ooh, I've never done that. I've never done anything like that. That's not a bad idea. The thing is, I don't I don't do YouTube or or anything else really. I mean, I guess it, it would just need to be an audio file, so I could put it on, like, SoundCloud or something. And then just 
you sync up the, the commentary track while you watch the movie, because obviously I couldn't couldn't watch it otherwise. Trust me, I wish I could just like stream it. I don't think we can. I think the closest we'd be able to do would be a um, an Amazon watch party. Sybil. And even then, I don't think Silent Hill is on is on there for that. Do it on Discord. Maybe. I don't even have a Discord channel anymore. Like, I never really use Discord outside of the the rare times where I need to, like, get together with friends and play a multiplayer game. Which is, like, once a week at most. But that's part of the reason I got rid of the the channel Discord that, I, that we used to have a long time ago. Because I, I was just, like, never in it. I felt weird being a streamer with a Discord that the streamer is, like, never in. Because we used to do movie nights a long time ago. There was a different website where pretty much we just ignored DMCA and streamed and watched movies together. ConnectCast? No, this was um, Rabbit something? Rabbit TV? Something like that. I don't remember. It's, this was years ago. was always so clunky but it worked well enough for the occasional movie night was fun rabbit uh i mean it was fine it was it was just for kind of watching movies a lot of people use discord in the same way now doesn't discord have like a super small limit on on how many people can like watch streamed video Twenty-five. So only 25 people would would be able to join me, even if I went through the trouble of making a channel Discord, getting people to join that Discord, arranging a time for a movie night. For just me and like 25 people. Kinda doesn't sound super worth stupid DMCA rules I wish I could just stream it on Twitch even if I have to like delete the VOD or something only 364 here can do a raffle yeah we'll do a raffle For my few hundred regular viewers, my 15 something thousand followers, we'll just raffle off for 25 seats to watch uh, the Silent Hill movie with me. Do commentary. Don't take the chance. The one fellow who played the Morbius movie on his Twitch channel. Is that a thing? I mean, I don't know why 
As soon as that sentence left my mouth, I'm like, of course, of course, it's a fucking thing. As soon as I said it, I'm like, that's a dumb question. Of course somebody got their channel banned over Morbius. Sony lost so much money, they would 100% go after that. Oh man, imagine trying to like recoup expenses on a big blockbuster failure like that by just DMCAing and taking uh, a bunch of people to court. Yeah, Yasha can't do links in chat. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I don't... Uh, it's not enough. I don't care enough about it to... do any other sort of sketchy... stream stuff. For the Silent Hill movie. Now, the commentary track in general, I think, uh, wouldn't be the worst idea. Because that I can just record on my own, upload the audio, and let people watch the video, watch the Silent Hill movie however they have it to watch. And then just sync it up with the commentary. But it's a little too sketch, and, uh... Yeah. A little too much trouble to, to stream it, I think. Do you find it strange Discord hasn't cracked down on that more yet? Yeah, I know. That is, uh... a bit weird. They're more focused on... NFTs or something, I don't know. just you and 25 people max and you aren't selling anything? Yeah, I still don't think it works that way. Exactly. It's still a public showing. 
Like, I, I understand where you're coming from. Like, you could almost equate it to just like, oh, okay, it, it, you're not like... If you sit down on your couch and you're watching a movie with six friends and none of them own that movie, like, obviously you're not doing, you know, distributing the film publicly or whatever. But it's in the privacy of your own home. With, like, a Discord channel, you're streaming it to where it is online. It's on a server. Somebody could record it through your stream. Somebody could redistribute it and, you know, sell it. Not likely. But yeah, uh, I don't I don't know if it works that way. If there's like an, an upper limit, law can be mad fuzzy. Anytime, as a decent rule of thumb, if a law can be mad fuzzy, it's always going to lean in favor of who brings the most money to court. And license holders for registered media like films are always going to have the money in court more than the individual they, they bring up. So as far as like, oh, it's just 25 people. It's not distributing. You're not selling anything. If, if it's a gray area, if it's fuzzy, it is not in the person streaming's favor. Cheryl! Thank you, Daddy. Goodbye. That was a really bad run. Cheryl? Can't be. Can't leave like this. This can't be happening. Cheryl! Cheryl! Spanish teacher in high school showed us the movie Top Gun in class. Dude, my fucking English teacher in middle school had us watch um, the Star Wars movies, like the first three. Harry. The original trilogy. Go. We literally used the Star Wars uh, movies to learn about traditional storytelling and archetypes, good versus evil, etc., etc. Yeah, hero's tale analysis, uh, major archetypes, etc. 41 minutes. That was terrible. That was terrible. No kidding, have a lot of copyright claims on my little bullshit YouTube channel. That's why I don't do YouTube stuff at all. I very briefly had a YouTube channel um, where I was uploading my Silent Hill playthroughs and stuff. And half of them would be claimed Cheryl. by Konami. Cheryl? So you can't monetize them at all. Even though it's like my gameplay, my commentary, you know... Where are you going? Everything gets claimed by Konami because hey, if a cutscene plays or even just the background music of the game, um, they can claim it. So whenever I had the YouTube channel, half the stuff that I made was just immediately claimed and couldn't be monetized by because of Konami. The other half was claimed where somebody completely unrelated to Silent Hill or Konami would claim revenue for it because there were like bands and musicians who scammed the fucking system 
where this siren sound that you hear right now is like technically a stock sound. It doesn't just belong to Silent Hill, but it's most recognized as something in Silent Hill. So there will be bands and musicians that use that sound effect in their song. So when their their company that they are licensed through sends their bots out onto YouTube this? and find videos What's that use that on? siren, a band that has nothing to do with Silent Hill, nothing to do with Konami, just uses that sound effect in a song, can claim, like falsely claim the revenue on your video for having that siren in it. And they're like YouTube, their their system for trying to like dispute something like that when it comes to copyright claims is all like 99% automated. If you have enough money and you're a large enough channel, you can probably get a human being to look at it. But for the majority of people, you have to go through an automated system where somebody scamming the system and wrongfully claiming something that is not theirs is not even an option on the form that you can fill out to file for a dispute. to this place so YouTube like is just a, an entire fucking headache that's why I very briefly had a YouTube channel where I uploaded stuff uh, I had it for a few months and like it was doing well but oh my god YouTube's policies and the way shit works on there is so fucking awful like don't get me wrong Twitch is not perfect but it's leaps and bounds better than the shit you have to deal with on YouTube. So I, I just didn't have... <laughs> I did not have the energy to fuck with that platform. I would much rather just sink my time into doing streams and stuff here on Twitch. And that's what I do for content. I don't mess with anything else. I don't do YouTube. I don't fucking... I'm not on TikTok. I don't do any other sort of content. I just stream. I just play stuff. I play video games on the internet on Twitch. That's all I, I have the, the fucking brain power to deal with. Because, yeah, YouTube's a fucking nightmare. So that's why for anybody who's here who is like, I saw your stuff on YouTube. What are you talking about? You probably saw the re-uploads by Sci-Fi Guy, a.k.a. Dorian House who runs, uh, it was the Sci-Fi Guy channel. It got split into separate channels. So it's now the Restless Dreams channel where uh, Dorian uploads some of my archive streams. So of course, shout outs to Dorian for dealing with YouTube. I'm going through that effort. Because I do appreciate it, and I'm glad uh, a lot of people seem to appreciate it as well, because there's always tons of people here who are, like, telling me they, they enjoy the videos, that they found them through YouTube, fall asleep watching them on YouTube, so... It's cool. I really appreciate it. But damn, I wish YouTube was not such a headache to deal with. Had a GTA 5 benchmark video copyright claimed by a couple large conglomerates. Eventually they let it go. Another video got straight up removed. Suspect for political reasons. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's all it's all fucking weird. It's all weird and too much to to deal with when I'm like I just want to I just want to play some fucking video games that I really enjoy and obsess over and talk to people about them.
Cat got a possible strike for Mortuary's assistant, and that game doesn't have any copyrighted music or whatever. Damn. See, and that shit is so seemingly random. Because, like, I heard of... See, apparently Cat gets something, and then Maxi says he didn't get anything. I've heard of people getting copyright strikes because of the license music in Back for Blood. Uh, whenever you're around the jukebox and it's got music playing. I knew people who got strikes because of that. I played Back for Blood on my channel without muting the music multiple times. Never got anything, not even a warning. So even from just channel to channel, it's super inconsistent. Like what one person gets a strike for or what someone else doesn't. Yeah, Santarin. I believe it. I totally believe it. People using the bullshit copyright system to blackmail people because they know they can abuse the system and that it's going to be a pain in the ass for, you know, YouTube to actually do anything about it. So they're counting on the, the creator to just be like, all right, pay some money so that you drop the strikes. And, like, what else can you really do? Because you're not going to get any help from YouTube. Yeah, that, that shit is... It's terrible. It's just really, really, really bad. And I know a lot of it is not on YouTube. A lot of it is just on kind of the DMCA laws themselves. Um, but the way their system is set up, it makes it even more abusable, unfortunately. But yeah, I got a lot of respect. I definitely got a lot of respect for people who uh, who are full-time YouTubers. Even more so if people do like... Oh shit, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, if, 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 if you're somebody who does uh, streaming and YouTube and like other stuff. It is so much. You have to do so fucking much. Just to dance around those kind of policies and... Be able to make a living, you know... Making videos. It's a fucking lot.
But yeah, I, I dealt with the YouTube stuff and had my channel for maybe, maybe six months. But at that time, like, it was already such a bad system. And that was right around the time that YouTube did a, a big update in some of their copyright policies that was essentially making it even worse. So after that, I was just like, no, I'm done. I'm done making stuff for YouTube. I'm sorry, YouTube. Again, even Twitch is not perfect. Twitch has a lot of problems with how things work here. But uh, at the end of the day with Twitch, I know I can just like make my channel, jump on, and play a game. And it doesn't have to be anything complicated. I don't have to jump through any fucking hoops. I don't have to like, oh, I, I need to be careful about what I say because if I, you know, talk about something like we're playing Silent Hill and uh, trauma and abuse of minors is a topic of the game. So... The algorithm is going to blacklist my channel, so you can't find it in, in the, the search engines of Twitch. You know, that's the kind of shit that happens on YouTube. Where it's like, okay, you, you can't talk about certain things or have certain aspects of your content. Otherwise, you'll just be like shadow banned where people can't find your, your stuff at all. And it's like, if people can't find your channel in your videos, then why make them? Actually surprised I bumped the wall there. Apparently YouTube's far harsher on swearing now. Even bleeps will shadow ban vids. I believe it. Yeah. And again, who knows if that's even anything that's actually being looked at and reviewed. Because so, so much on YouTube is just these, like, automated systems... You just have an AI that scans for videos, and if something, if too much of something pops up, it's just like, eh. Flag it, or, or shadow ban it, or, you know, whatever. You know, at some point, YouTube's excessive policies will break the camel's back, and that'll be it for them. It's hard to say, because YouTube's one of those companies that's so fucking big. And technically is part of an even bigger company conglomerate. Look at Discord replacing Skype, it can happen. I mean, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but even with Discord replacing Skype, 
like Discord was around and was already providing sort of an alternative. What is the alternative to YouTube? What is out there that is even remotely the same kind of platform that YouTube is that would overtake it? <laughs> Daily motion. Yeah, you would have to have something massive, absolutely massive, to overtake YouTube. And here's the thing. I think it could be Twitch. I think Twitch could be that company. If they ever put that much focus into the fact that you can upload videos. Like a lot of people don't even realize that's a thing that you can do on Twitch. You can upload videos to Twitch. Twitch is not just live streams. You can archive streams indefinitely by highlighting them and saving them in a playlist. I do it. I have a almost 500 hour playlist of Silent Hill videos on this channel. Like if you've gotten here by watching my stuff that got re-uploaded onto YouTube, the stuff that made it onto YouTube is maybe 10%, maybe, of everything I've done with Silent Hill since 2015 on this channel. But the majority of that is still here archived on Twitch. I've made some videos where like I've edited stuff and uploaded directly to Twitch, which you can also watch right here. But Twitch does not advertise or make it easy to find anything except for live content. Even just trying to look up a past broadcast is a pain in the ass now. Let alone trying to find like a playlist, collections, highlights, uploads, all these other aspects of Twitch that are really good. Like anybody who does anything on YouTube could have a Twitch channel and just upload videos the exact same way that they do on YouTube. Making any of that visible is an issue Twitch has not capitalized on. I completely agree. I'm like, how did you go through all the trouble of adding these features to Twitch? And then you don't advertise them. And then, yeah, the rerun feature. Twitch, get, Twitch doing away with the rerun feature is a great example. If reruns had been properly framed to be so people knew what they were, that it was older streams... Uh, being rebroadcast because that was most people's issues with reruns. They would show up and they'd start chatting and supporting thinking that they're watching a live channel and then be like, oh, it's a rerun and drop off. If they had advertised it correctly, if they had marketed it correctly, and if they had made it a, a feature well known enough so that people wouldn't be confused... I think it would have done fine. And they'll probably eventually get rid of stuff like uploads and playlists and collections. Because when they look at their metrics, they're like, people never use this stuff. It's a super, super tiny percentage that actually utilize those things. But they don't understand that, like, it's not because it's a bad feature. It's just not implemented well. Nobody knows about it. It's tough. I suspect a lot of people on Twitch are here for live content, and it's a big investment in resources to compete with YouTube. It's a big investment in resources to allow uploads in the first place. So why even introduce it onto the platform? If the focus is live content, you know what I mean? Like, if they want to put all of their eggs in one basket and just be the best live stream platform, then all they have to do is put all of their effort and focus into that. Don't worry about past broadcasts. Don't worry about highlights. 
collections, uploads, any of that stuff. But obviously they've put some investment into resources because those things exist. Like, they're, they're here. They just don't make any effort to actually get people to utilize them. So they're wasting the resources that they invested in putting those features in in the first place. Like, why would you attribute any resources to it and then not let people know about it? Make it make it more of a thing? If enough uh, top content creators on Twitch use the uploads, it would begin to make a profit. See, I feel like this also ties in with like ads. Ads have been a big issue on Twitch for a while now. Ads used to not really be a problem on Twitch at all. And in the last couple years, they've gotten pretty bad. To the point where like, I've got Twitch Turbo and every once in a while, I, I want to just like jump on Twitch and on like, I'm laying in bed and I've got my PS5 hooked up or my Xbox hooked up and I pull up the Twitch app and it's not synced with my account or whatever. And I'm like, it's fine. I just want to pull up a stream. And you have to, s oh my God, sitting on a console with no ad blocker type stuff without my Twitch Turbo account is fucking pain. There is so many ads, but it's like, what if your focus was on the live content, right? So why not have the live content be ad free, but then market your uploads, highlights, clips, all of these alternate features of Twitch that are not live content and put ads there. I'd be a lot less upset about having to load up a VOD and watch an ad before I watch my VOD, as opposed to having a live stream interrupted by an ad where I might legitimately miss something. If it's on video content, past broadcasts, hi highlights, twi uh, uh, highlights, clips, uploads. If it's on, if all the ads are there, and the ad and and people know about those features and actually use them. There's a lot of opportunity for ad revenue without having it take away from your main focus. That is your live content. I don't know. I, uh, maybe there is, this is obviously something outside of my wheelhouse and I, I'm just sort of talking out of my ass. I'm assuming I know how things work, but I've never had to work. You know, I've never had to be the person to make those decisions. So I don't know what all logistically goes into these ideas, but to me, from my perspective, it's just confusing as someone who's been on Twitch for almost 11 years. There's a lot of features on Twitch that don't make any sense to me. Turning on a fighting game tournament, biggest fight of the day, five ads in a row. Exactly. But if I had to sit and watch five ads before watching the VOD of Grand Finals, I'd be way, way more fine with that. As opposed to, you know, interrupting the actual live stream. Which, by the way, for anybody watching, while I have this whole uh, argument, 
and uh, everything as far as ads go on Twitch. If you watch my channel with an ad blocker or anything like that, get the fuck. No, I'm just kidding. I do not care. In fact, I highly recommend it. It makes for a much nicer uh, viewing experience, and it means I don't have to repeat myself because you won't be like, I'm sorry, I missed you explaining the plot of the game. Can you repeat yourself? Because five ads just came up. I, I don't make any fucking money from ads. I have never once in my life, I've been streaming. I've been on Twitch since 2011. I've been partnered since 2017. I have never once in my life clicked anything that said roll ad. I've never given a shit about ad revenue. Because even if I went out of my way and told everybody to fucking try to make a dent in that ad revenue, or if I tried to roll ads and stuff, the amount of money that you get from it is so fucking comically small. If you aren't a streamer with like tens of thousands of people all watching and watching ads, you don't get like fucking anything from ad revenue. So you're not you're not depriving me of like my livelihood by watching and enjoying the stream and turning on an ad blocker. Like I 100% do not care. Somehow I'll have to live without that extra $4 a month. Uh, but I'll manage. Do you not make money off highlighted uploads? No, right now, there is no monetization on anything other than live streams on Twitch. Well, technically, you can monetize... Um, technically, you can monetize your VODs. Technically, you can make your uh, VODs subscriber only so that people literally have to subscribe if they want to watch your past bots again something I would never in my fucking right mind do was I dreaming Because, yeah, that seems like such a shitty thing to do. It's like, oh, you missed the stream? Oh, you want to go back and watch that story playthrough that you really liked from a couple years ago? Pay me five bucks. Just because you weren't there live. Your life didn't revolve around my stream schedule, so you owe me five bucks. I don't know. That just seems shitty to me. Did notice Twitch VODs can have ads now? Seems more frequent than just general viewing ads. Do, do they really? I hadn't noticed it on VODs, but I guess maybe it is at that point. Pay me to talk about Silent Hill, please. I mean, technically... <laughs> nah. I legitimately just, man, I love Twitch. I love the feeling of being able to sit down and play games, especially at this point where I've been streaming for so long. So many of you are people who like, you've been here for almost every stream since like 2015 and are still here and chat with me. I mean, I'm literally just playing games and talking to friends. Like that's, that's at the end of the day, all I need to ever get out of Twitch is that feeling of sitting on a couch, playing a game with friends. 
and talking about the video games or and or stupid shit. It's something that I never had any idea would ever earn me a dime. <laughs> Let alone be something that I do to, like, pay bills. So, I am always super, super appreciative that I'm at a spot in my life where I can do this and people support me and I can, I can get by. But if it ever gets to a point where I'm, like, not paying bills or whatever, I would 100% still be doing this. Come on, romper. I don't know. Long story short, Twitch is weird, but it's not as fucked up as YouTube. Also, I feel like my collision gets broken sometimes. Like this fucking romper gets into these situations where it just will not hit me, even if it pounces right against me. And now he just won't aggro at all. Are they called romper because they stomp you? The romper stomper. I hate this monkey. Brother. You're right there. You follow me all the way up to where we need to be. Thank you. Always love mad crazy breaks like this. Oh, like out of bounds and sequence breaks? Oh, uh, just wait until we start doing uh, Silent Hill 3 again. Silent Hill 3 and Silent Hill Homecoming. Those two games out of the whole series are the most like out of bounds sequence breaky type of runs. And they are really, really fun. I still have to learn all the new shit in Silent Hill 3. too much damage there. 
Shit's still getting more broken as well. Yeah, Silent Hill 3 is... Silent Hill 3 was kind of busted for a little while with some weird stuff. You'd like alt tab and click the game window to be able to, uh, god dang it, to be able to save in-game time during spots like Borley's Haunted Mansion. But then people figured out quick save, quick load strats where you make Heather balance on the edge. Like whenever you play on normal mode or harder in Silent Hill 3, and you approach like the edge of a walkway where you can fall or where there's a pit. If you walk up to it, Heather will sort of balance on the edge of it before she falls over. It gives the player a chance to not fall. And runners figured out that if you quick save while that animation's happening and then reload that, that save, it'll put Heather out of bounds in different ways. So it's used throughout the run quite a bit to skip, like, a lot of segments of Silent Hill 3. So 3 has gotten very sequence breaky. Uh, and then Homecoming has kind of always been that way. People have figured out more ways to break it and easier ways, easier methods to break it. But for a long time, Silent Hill Homecoming has been the once you find a gun... Uh, walls are just a suggestion game. Because that is literally how that game works as far as speedruns. Once you have a handgun, or really any kind of gun, but mainly a handgun, you can basically go through any wall. But the fun part of it is, like, if you go through a wall where there's not collision on the other side of the wall, you just fall through the world and die. So you wind up with these situations where you have to clip through the walls, but only the specific walls where you can skip something. And if you mess up even a little bit, like too much in the wrong position or whatever, you, your whole run can potentially die because you just fall to your death. But it's a really, really fun run if you like uh, glitches and skips. Has the puzzle skip in Homecoming gotten any easier? The, the, puzz the clip into the final boss room? That puzzle skip? Yeah, technically, the new methods and stuff for it are easier than the old ones. Um, but it's still kind of a pain in the ass. It's, it's a lot more consistent now. Like, the old method was not only very difficult, but also very inconsistent. Where even if you knew what you were doing, sometimes it just, the game would not let it happen. The newer method for skipping makes it still very hard to do, but it's much more consistent. Where kind of once you get it down, you're more likely to get it in a run, even though it is difficult. So, it's it's easier. It's gotten easier. I wouldn't call it easy. But it's better than it used to be. Can't wait to see the new skips. Yeah. Eventually we will get there. Because my goal is... Uh, to do a big speedrun marathon of all the series games back to back again. Because I haven't done that since last January. I did a I did a speedrun marathon for my birthday. So it's been a while. So 
So I'm going to be brushing up on speedrunning all the games again. Because some of them I haven't run in, like, years. Ever done commentary for runs? You know your stuff and would be great at it. Uh, a few times. A few times. I've been on a couple of couches for GDQ runs. Um, so I provided some commentary if you watch um, games GDQ X, which was the, uh, the like mini games done quick event at TwitchCon back in uh, 2019. Dude, this romper. Um, if you watch Techie, UFO Techie's Silent Hill Homecoming speedrun, that was at uh, GDQX 2019. I was on the couch for that and did some commentary. Uh, I was there for Ekdice's uh, running Fatal Frame. Or, excuse me, um... Maxi was running Fatal Frame. And it was, uh, myself, Ekdysis, and Enigma on the couch. Isis is a cool guy? Hell yeah. Those are all cool guys. Maxi, Enigma. A lot of people in the Silent Hill horror streaming and speedrunning community are really, really cool. I'm really lucky I've gotten to, to meet so many great people in this community. It sucks that I can't do it more. Hopefully, uh... Hopefully, situation will get to where I feel comfortable going out to public events and stuff again. started watching Ick Dices lately. Definitely, if you're not watching Ick, go follow twitch.tv slash Ick Dices. He is really, really funny. Super, super entertaining. And a really good speedrunner for a lot of games. A lot of different games. And he's currently out at EVO this weekend competing in the biggest fighting game tournament in the world using the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller for his matches. So he's also an absolute fucking legend of a human being just in general. <clears throat> Luckily, you're streamers, so you can hang out digitally. Oh, but that's the thing. That's what makes TwitchCon and Games Done Quick and like all these kind of events so much fun. Is you get all these all these streamers, all these people together, all these personalities who are used to like hanging out online. And a lot of times, like by the time I went to TwitchCon and GDQ the first time, 
I was meeting all these people in person, but we had all known each other on Twitch for years. So getting to like meet face to face and like go to dinner and have drinks and hang out in person with people who you've like known online for a long time, but don't get to hang out like in person a whole lot. Oh man, that is just something else. That is a whole nother kind of vibe. And it's a lot of fun. I always have a great time at those events, just getting to see people I've... and hang out. Definitely miss it. I haven't gone out to done anything really since uh, AGDQ 2020. Get drunk with Twitch friends, embarrass yourself heavily. Never talk about it ever again. Oh, I'm not the one who gets embarrassed. I'm I'm the reliable old man who can hold his alcohol and always be uh always be a gentleman. Mr. Sensible. I just have enough life experience. I've embarrassed myself enough at, at parties throughout my 20s that I can very uh, reasonably enjoy things without embarrassing myself in my 30s. One and a half years left. Enjoy it. 30s better? I've definitely enjoyed my 30s more than my, my 20s overall, I would say. Obviously, there's stuff that, that I miss about youth. As though I am like a shriveled old man now. <laughs> But that's one of those things that that like it's interesting to me because literally like I've Here. I made my Twitch account. I've been on Twitch since 2011. So I'm 34 now. I'll be 35 uh, in January. So, I mean, even just my experience of being on Twitch as a 24-year-old versus a 34-year-old is so different. Like, I have the experience now where I'm very comfortable. I'm not nervous or, you know... A lot of times starting off streaming and kind of being younger, it's harder to, like, start talking with people and things like that. No. I'm at a point where it's, like, comes very naturally. Don't have to think about things too hard. But at the same time, when I was in my mid-twenties, I was streaming like 12 hours a day, like six or seven days a week, and I could do like 24 to 30 hour marathons 
no problem. Did it like every other weekend. Anybody who's been following me for that long remembers we used to go hard on the fucking super long streams. Every stream was like minimum of 12 hours. Uh, could very easily go to 18, 19, 20 hours. Um, and then a lot of times would very specifically do full 24 plus hour marathons. And I mean, literally every other weekend, like every month I would do like two or three marathons like that. I can't do that shit anymore in my 30s. <laughs> now I feel like I stream. If I stream for like eight hours, I feel the same way that I used to when I would stream for like 20. Because I've had a few people like comment on that where I'm like yeah most of my streams now are like four to six hours at most but yeah it's just harder it's a lot more effort trying to uh, stay awake and stay alert and keep track of like what I'm playing and what I'm doing. Old man nub needs his rest. Yeah. My brain starts melting way sooner in a long stream than it used to. It's 12 o'clock. Time for his nap. find it hard keeping up with Twitch chats these days? Like, f as a streamer? Or just in, in general? Like, just chatting? Because that's one of those things that has become so second nature to me now. Like, looking over... You, you don't understand. Like, my brain has been so completely hardwired to do certain things from the past several years on Twitch, like being a streamer on Twitch, where even if I play video games by myself, if I'm not streaming something and I'm just sitting and playing a game, I cannot help myself from, if there's even a moment of a pause in a game where like an animation is happening or, you know, whatever, I look at my other monitor. I look at my other monitor expecting chat. Like my brain is so hardwired to be, to not Daddy. just look at a game on one screen anymore. Cheryl. I can't just sit and stare at my one screen and play a game. My my brain instinctively looks over. And I'm just like, right, I'm not streaming. I'm just playing a video game. This can't be happening. Cheryl. Cheryl. Sometimes reach for your ciggies, even though I quit ages ago. Kind of sounds like that. Yeah, it's just one of those habits that's become so ingrained. 
Like, it's something that I've been doing since 2011. And doing more or less full-time since 2015. It's like going to push glasses up while not wearing them. Another good example, another one of those things that's kind of in my head that I can't fix. Um, the car that I drove the most in my lifetime, or cars, for the longest part of my life were standard. So manual transit uh, transmission. So I got so used to driving stick that now, whenever I do drive, it's usually an automatic. And my brain still instinctively wants there to be a clutch. And I, I can't have both my hands on the steering wheel. Like I have to rest my hand down where the shifter would be if it were a manual, like, because that's just what I've gotten used to. So that that's when my brain is in car mode, when my brain is in I'm driving now mode, even if it's on an automatic, I I can't, I can't break the habit of putting my foot in position to like step on a clutch and putting my hand in position to be on a shifter. It's just things that when it sticks with you for so long, you can't shake it. And Twitch has given me the the new <laughs> weird tick of constantly looking for another screen next to the screen that I'm playing something on. Like, chat should be here. I have a moment. Let me look at chat, even when there is no chat. Yamaoka! Soundsbox is a favorite material possession you own. Nice. Soundsbox is a nice piece of Silent Hill collector stuff. Shame it doesn't include anywhere near all the tracks. Like, this song isn't on there. The result screen music. This song is not on any of the official soundtracks. You can find it unofficially out there on the internet, and it's usually under the title uh, Eternal Rest. But yeah, it sucks. There's a lot of songs missing from the official soundtracks. All right. Uh, I think I want to go eat some breakfast. I guess breakfast. It's 8.30 in the morning. My, my sleep is so fucked up. But yeah. I think that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go grab some food. Uh, I might be back on later today or tonight. Um, and if nothing else, I will definitely be back on tomorrow. Uh, sometime Sunday evening. I'm not sure exactly when. Because I've got some other things I'm going to be doing for a little while. I'm house sitting for a friend while they're out of town. And uh, taking care of their dogs. So... My my schedule of doing things is going to be a little bit more skewed than usual, but I'll be on uh, tomorrow. We'll we'll do a Silent Hill one story playthrough. Um, make sure Twitch notifications are turned on, or if you're new to the channel, make sure you've got me followed if you want to be here for that. Uh, if you don't make it, that's fine. I always archive all of my story playthrough stuff, so there will absolutely always be vods to go back and catch if you miss it. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do a St Silent Hill one story playthrough sometime tomorrow and, uh, next week, Monday, we'll do, uh, our usual book of Mondays, grinding through some, uh, Silent Hill book of memories zones, probably do some multiplayer games with friends afterwards, some dead by daylight or some back for blood Tuesday. We will probably begin the arduous task of 
relearning how to speedrun Silent Hill 2 because there is a ton of new stuff in the Silent Hill 2 route since I last ran the game consistently. So I'm going to have to get used to directional controls. I'm going to have to get used to doing the new out of bounds or the modified out of bounds for the directional controls. I'm going to have to learn how to do RNG manipulation. So there's a lot of fun stuff to learn with Silent Hill 2. So that'll probably be a lot of next week's streams is uh, learning to run Silent Hill 2 again. Because it's basically a completely different run from when I first learned it eight years ago. <laughs> anyway. Kat, thank you again so much for the raid. I really appreciate you bringing all your fine folks over here. Uh, and again, for any of my viewers, if you don't watch Cat Link, please follow Kat. Um, she's a wonderful, wonderful streamer. Does a lot of horror games and speed runs as well. But yeah, thanks you guys for coming by, chilling, hanging out. Let's go pass the love along. Let's see who we can we can raid. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that early morning Bakba Soup stream. We're gonna go raid my good friend and one of my favorite streamers, Bakba Soup. He's doing um, back rooms, the back room lost and found, and then later I think he's doing some Final Fantasy X-2. Box been so early lately? Yes, and my fucked up sleep schedule loves it. Because it means I get to watch more Bach. Watch more Bach. Go watch Bach. Bach is great. The wonderful, wonderful streamer. Super funny. Really, really talented. World class speedrunner. World class chef. And uh very nice chicken man. So please go show him some love. And uh, thank you all for hanging out, keeping me company. I'll see you tomorrow night for a Silent Hill story playthrough. Till then, take it easy. Be good to each other. I'll see you next time. Peace.